UATV, the lofters. The lofters get their fortunes read. And Jen gets some bad news. Do I think that he's the person that you're meant to be with for the rest of your life? No. I don't think so. There's somebody else. I don't know when Frank and I are going to get married. Meanwhile, Matthew has finally caught his man. Why? Why gay men can't give their sperm in Canada to uh, sperm banks? We are a group of Canadians. At downtown law. Where we work at a TV station hosting programs on everything. News and music. Sex and game shows. We also live in the law. Cameras everywhere. 24-7. UHTV.com. This is our reality. Hey. gonna get the big jewel but that's not now that's another right. six months because Frank needs to get over the fact that we tease him all year about it how about with Frank what do you think is gonna happen you think they're gonna stay together I, I just just my little thing I, I have this very very strong feeling that that her career she, her career is so important to her and it's gonna pull her in such an opposite direction from Frank and they're gonna move apart oh that's crazy. They're gonna, they're gonna grow apart. Oh. I agree with Trey on the career thing. I mean, I've always told all my boyfriends that my career is much more important than a relationship. But that being said, it's not. I I can't see me ever being with anybody else but Frank. That's because that person hasn't showed their head yet. Every Wednesday night after the Lofters show, we do a show called Lofters Live, which is one of our shows on the internet. So what we did was we had Anna, the, uh, the psychic from Crystal Balls, she came in and spent an entire hour with all six of the Lofters reading their cards and, uh, and predicting what was going to happen to us in the future. I think that you suffer greatly from heartbreak and you have to almost give an ultimatum. I don't believe in tarot cards. I just, I, they're too dangerous to listen to because they could shoot you off in one direction and then, then ruin your life, potentially. You had to walk away from the situation, okay? It was absolutely imperative that you left. I still look at it as a good relationship, my relationship um, with Dan, but I think in the future I'm going to be more clear as to um, what I need to do and hopefully I can join with someone who has goals that you know are kind of parallel so therefore we can like work on things together. I don't know whether or not they will appreciate you the way that you should be appreciated. Who? Vancouver? Your family. My family. Yeah. My family? Family means like a lot to me especially um, as, like obviously when I'm at home, when I'm in Vancouver, I mean I live with them so I see them every single day and I miss them. They need to understand that you are a completely independent young woman who needs to take charge of her own life, okay? That you and your partner will be alright for money, that you don't mm. need to worry. It's going to be the okay. first time of my life, thank you. Okay. She told me that we'll make some money uh, in the future, which is good, I need money. There is success there for you, uh, but at a, at a price. It's time for me to um, go 110 trillion percent forward into making sure that I sign a big movie contract. And uh, you guys see me on Entertainment Tonight. Okay, we need the next lofter up. Who's next? Who's next? Jen! It's Jennifer! I think the one that we didn't expect was Jen's prediction. With your partner, I feel that he cares enough about you to, to, let, you, to let you go. Okay? Do I think that he's the person that you're meant to be with for the rest of your life? No. I don't think so. There's somebody else. I think when, when you know, some cynics or skeptics, whatever, are saying, oh, Jen and Frank will never last, they don't know us very well. I could see her getting very heavily involved in, in the, the corporate, your job, and the suits, and 
the people that don't play say, play PlayStation 2, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think if, if you roll the footage back to earlier on in the year, you can probably find a quote from Frank Lambert that said... She, she knows that you know we're going to get married and stuff like that, and I always joke around that I need to... I have, like, uh, different things on my list of things to buy, like my big purchases, and, and it's like PlayStation 2 and Ring. So as soon as I get my PlayStation 2, there will be a ring for Jennifer. <laughs> what do you think, though, about the possibility that maybe you guys are going apart? Did you, did you find that this year it brought you closer, or did you think that it did pull you apart? No, this year was a definite strain on my relationship with Frank. Huge. Like, I couldn't believe how big of a strain it was. <laughs> Bam. We can't handle that. I'm having fun. It's so annoying. Why, because I'm having fun or the sound? <laughs> I've had it with you. Okay. Oh, yeah. That'll be it. That's the really expensive Shakespeare vase, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah, that comes. Be very careful. <laughs> oh, this one is sick of this. Everything. I've asked you a question three times, and I'm still waiting for an answer from you. <laughs> I'm not having fun. He makes it more difficult for me. Um, so, yeah, I, I, wish, I wish it was... I don't know, I guess I wish he was a little more sympathetic sometimes, but that's Frank. And yeah, I was crying yesterday, my eyes were red. And instead of him coming over and hugging me, he picked up a camera and took a photo. Watching someone go through emotions is, is, is such a, uh, you know, I hate to say cool thing. Like I wasn't sitting there going, Jennifer's crying, like this is so cool. I'm just like, I, you know, I love Jennifer and, and I love seeing her going through different emotions. I heard you say out of your own, your own mouth, before, before this year at UATV, I couldn't bear ever thinking, not even not being with Frank, and yeah. now we've been away with him. I, I, I feel I'm a strong enough woman I could be on my own. If he died, if it was that over. was the question. <laughs> I mean, I think when some of the, the other lofters were saying, oh, you know, you're so career-driven, Jen, that your relationship's going to take a back burner, I, I agree with that. I mean, I would, this year's a perfect example that my career has totally come first and my relationship has come second. Um, but Frank, you know, Frank is okay with that. He doesn't like being second, but he wouldn't like it if I resented him for me not being able to further my career. I can see Jen um, just thinking about herself and being selfish and uh, just uh, moving up the corporate ladder, just going up there and, uh, you know, using it for all it's worth. And, uh, and if that means leaving Frank in the dust, she's ready to do that. The other Loftus predictions for my future really didn't mean anything to me. I mean, when Trey's like, oh, there's no way you and Frank are going to stay together. You're going to have this big career and marry some rock star or something. That's fine. I mean, he can think that. It doesn't... What Trey thinks about the rest of my life has no bearing on the rest of my life. So it didn't bother me one bit. When I asked about uh, a change in, you, in your personal life, the name Grant came up. So I don't know whether you're going to meet this person. don't know whether it, it is a potential relationship. What's up, everybody? I am Marissa, and I'm in the loft right now telling you about a way to see more into the new potential lofters' lives. You can check out our website at www.u8tv.com. Now, on the main page, the big splash page, and all these things are flashing around and telling you where to go. But you need to check out our video on demand. And there's a big banner, and it says Bathing Beauty. So these are the third group of lofter wannabes that are jumping in the tub. The third group, now each group did jump in the tub, but these ones did a little differently. So if you do want to check it out, you can. We welcome that. Of course, there's the European Magic Contest to Kontiki Tours, which means if you get eight of the new lofters right, if you choose them, you might be on your way to Europe. So enjoy. Check out our website, UATV.com. During my reading, Anna, the psychic, brought up this name, Grant, and she brought it up like, this guy's going to come into your life and change your life, and 
you know, sort of just threw this name out. You need to be very aware of this uh, person because he wears two faces, okay? Grant, is that a first name or last name? And I don't know anybody named Grant, and I don't know anybody whose last name is Grant either, but I guess I'll sort of keep an eye out for that. I'm getting that there's a, a feeling of, of like a widespread publication. This is not something small. This is something big that keep you in the public eye. Whereas with the relationship, it kind of does take a, a backseat. But with your partner, I feel that he cares enough about you to, to let you to let you go. After the show, Jen was looking at me and like, oh my God, I'm not going to be with Frank anymore. And she was making fun of it. But again, this morning, she was talking about it. You know what she told me? That, <laughs> that you were going to be my friend, but not my lover forever. So Trey calls you the ex now. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah, I made a prediction. I made a prediction that um, <clears throat> Jen and Frank won't stay together, that Jen will kind of like leave Frank behind and uh, Anna confirmed it. This person who you're with right now is a great friend and you can trust that and he will always be in your life. Probably not as, as a relationship slash partner. Jen was extremely uh, <laughs> unhappy with the prediction of Anna saying that she will not finish her life with Frank because she's madly in love uh, with Frank. People think that I'm supposed to be with like this six foot eight basketball star or I'm supposed to be with some larger than life personality that will somehow balance mine out. But my perfect balance is Frank. You know, he's extremely easygoing. I'm incredibly attracted to him and he understands me and I couldn't think of anybody more suited for me than Frank. Jen is all about business and not about personality and personal stuff like like at, at least that's what she's shown in the loft. Personally I think that they're gonna end up uh, finishing their life together. I really hope so and I think that Jen really hopes so and I know that Frank really loves Jan. She's a small town um, ex-waitress, small town this, and you throw her into the, into the big corporate world with all the suits and stuff, she's going to suck right into that, man. Sucked right in. And she's going to get used and abused and spit right back out. Are you recording? Good. I don't know when Frank and I are going to get married. And unfortunately, the ball is in his court right now. And it looks as though a digital camera might be in the front running for being the next large purchase. So uh, I might be on a reality show when I'm in my late 60s still saying, when the hell is he going to ask me to marry him? I don't know. I have no idea when we're going to get married. Okay, this is the deal. We know that Alan Rock, the Minister of Health, is in Toronto for the day, and I need to talk to him. Since since the beginning of the year, I've been trying as a gay man to allow gay men to give sperm to sperm bank, and I got this huge petition on the website, did some love to shows about it, and now there's a chance to see him. He doesn't want to give us any interviews. We tried to have serious interviews, and it never worked, but uh, we know now where he is. He's in a TV studio, and we're just going to try to go talk to him. Hopefully, it's going to work. Alan Rock so much this year and for such a long period of time that you know I made a lot of phone calls to be able to talk to Alan Rock. I uh, emailed a lot of people about him. I tried to chase him a lot of times before and that specific day where I was running through the streets of Toronto I had the feeling that that was it. That was the day where finally I will meet Alan Rock and be able to talk about my concerns. Um, as you probably know by now since the beginning of the year, um, I've been fighting for the rights of gay men to give sperm uh, in sperm bank. If everything uh, is fine in, in the initial interview, what we'll do is we'll set up an appointment for you to come in. Mm -hmm. And there's quite a lot of paperwork that you'll need to fill out because we want to know all about you. Um, the most important uh, is, of course, your medical history. Have you ever donated or applied to be a blood donor? Uh, yes. Okay. Were you ever rejected? Yes. Because? Because I'm gay. And, oh. And you can be gay and uh, give blood in uh, Quebec. You can't be gay and be a sperm donor either. Really? When I decided to, to phone and try to give my sperm to a sperm bank, I became uh, very frustrated and 
I start to fight for different reasons. I've been in, I've been in a monogamous relationship for more than two years, and yeah. I've been tested for AIDS like several times. I, I, unfortunately, mm -hmm. Matthew, the the um, the issue is not our issue. I didn't understand why, as a gay man, I was not allowed to give my sperm. When you give your sperm, it, it they freeze your sperm for six months. They do all the tests on it, and if you don't have HIV, if you don't have any disease, if your sperm is good enough, then they give you a sperm. When I realized I was not able to give my sperm, uh, one of the first thing I did is to call um, the health department of the Canadian government and to try to see uh, what was going on. I even went in Ottawa to meet with some MP and to understand the policy. So that's it. I'm out of the parliament building. Um, just finished my meeting with three really important people from uh, Health Canada, a doctor, an associate directress, and another woman in charge of those specific kind of tests for sperm and blood. Um, it's really disappointing, but at the same time, I was really expecting it. Like, they were there just to explain us what the policies were all about. And they even agreed that those policies were discriminating against certain groups, but they think that they have to discriminate, so it's kind of filters on the top of another filters and filter and filter and filter to actually have pure blood and pure uh, sperm. I went in Ottawa during the summer and it's uh, almost a winter now. Um, there's a long stretch there and this is not a stretch where I just forgot about the case. It's a stretch where I tried to reach Allen Rock. I made phone calls every week about it almost. And then the end of the year almost arrived and I start to stress, right? And I knew that on December 1st it was uh, World AIDS Day and that he will be in Toronto. So I called his cabinet, asked where he was, went to a first location, he was not there anymore, went to a second location, then tried to run and went to a TV studio where I knew that he was supposed to be and wait for him and just ask for an interview and kind of stop him at the door and ask, listen, I need to talk to you for five minutes. Mr. Rock, thank you so much for your time. I didn't want to be rude uh, in my comments with um, Alan Rock for several reasons. He's been really good uh, with the gay, lesbian, bisexual and transgender community. He's in pretty much all the parades, the Cape Pride parades around Canada. He's really open mind. Why? Why gay men can give their sperm in Canada to uh, sperm banks? I think there's a real concern. There, there has uh, always been uh, uh, a concern about HIV, about, uh, you know, is it safe? And um, I think it's a question of changing attitudes. And by the way, one of the ways to change attitudes mm -hmm. is to demonstrate that the gay community understands the need for safe sex, understands the need, the need for uh, prevention, and uh, that the infection rates are on the decline because people are being responsible. I don't really see the con connection between my, my question and your answer, actually. Why gay mans in Canada can't give their sperm to sperm banks? I didn't want to go there and be totally aggressive with the man. It was my first conversation with him, and I just wanted to be polite. The connection between your question and my answer is this. It's attitudes and misconceptions, stereotypes mm -hmm. that result in those policies. And one of the ways to attack the stereotypes is to demonstrate that they're wrong. By changing the policies? No, well, that's, that's, a, that's a good start. But also by changing the infection rates, by demonstrating that, uh, that the community is aware of the need mm. to bring down infections. And, yeah. And but to, do you think uh, the gay community is aware of, of, of the problem and try to change the attitude? Because if there's one community that stands up for, for AIDS, it's really the, the gay community by signing petitions, by throwing die-ins, by walking, by lobbying with politicians, by talking to journalists. Really, it's a community that show that they want to change their attitude. But it's still, um, it's still men having sex, sex with men, which is uh, increasing the infa and infection. And the woman as well. The woman is an increase as well. Yes. So, so there's other groups as well, and there's people sharing needles for drugs. So, uh, yeah, I'm not saying that's the only part. And it's the First Nations mm -hmm. communities too. Uh, where we don't uh, where we don't do enough, and uh, intravenous drug use is a, is a part of it too. So uh, going after all of these uh, causes at the same time is important. We're talking about life and death. I was really relieved at the end, not because his answers were terribly amazing. You know, I was talking to a politician and he was answering like a politician. But you know, I did it. You know, and having a goal at the beginning of the year and being able to go through my goal, I think. 
hundreds and hundreds of people going on the web and signing my petition was a real relief for me and uh, you know on a small scale I think I did my part as a lofter or just as a human being as a gay guy that you know knows that there's still discrimination out there I guess the next step now is to take this petition FedEx this petition to the right person, fax this petition to the right person, Alden Rock that is, and find some support in the gay and lesbian community in Toronto to go further, uh, you know, to, because it's not because I'm not a lofter anymore that I'm just going to stop everything there. I was not doing this for a TV show. I was doing this to stop discrimination against gay men. Uh, so, yeah, I'm... I hope it's not over, and I hope that uh, in three years uh, I'm not going to need petitions anymore, but I'm simply going to be able to give my sperm. What's up, everybody? This is Arissa and Machia chilling in the loft right now. This is what you need to check out. Don't forget, you pick the eight lofters that are actually chosen for the next season of the lofters. You might be on your way to Europe. So check that out. Don't forget, right after the show, though, on our website, u8tv.com. It's so gay. TV. So good TV, like I will say with a French accent. Tonight we're talking about big faggy job. We're talking about <laughs> hairdresser, fly attendant, poodle walker, fudge packer. No, just kidding. <laughs> that should be fun. It's the live on UATV.com and it's also on Pride Vision. Check that out, UATV.com.